What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is an exciting day. This is the very first official training that I have done for Bricks Builder. If you are from the Bricks community, definitely want to give you guys a big shout out and a warm welcome. I want to tell you just a little bit about myself and this channel so you know what's going on here, and then we will get right into the training. I am a digital agency owner. I've been doing this stuff for over 20 years. Uh, I teach how to run and grow a profitable digital agency in my private inner circle, which is a paid group with over 800 members. Uh, most of the projects that we do on the agency side of things are in the 10 to $80,000 range. We are exclusively on WordPress. We exclusively were using Oxygen. We're now using Oxygen and Bricks. And I'm also the creator of Automatic CSS, which you may have heard of. It's a utility framework. Uh, we released it late last year. It quickly became the number one utility framework for Oxygen. I do have full confidence that it is going to be the number one utility framework for Bricks as well. Okay, so I think that's enough about me. Let's go ahead and talk about the training. We're going to discuss the difference between sections and containers and divs inside of Bricks because I think that this is a big point of confusion for a lot of people. When do I use a section? When do I use a container? When do I use a div? What is the difference between the three? What should I be doing with containers that maybe I shouldn't be doing with divs or vice versa? I think there's a lot of questions and this video is going to bring tremendous clarity to this topic. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So I'm going to pull up our training website. Uh, if this is one of the first tutorials that you have watched from me, uh, you, you are going to learn very quickly that I don't just scratch the surface of things. I want to provide as much context and as much value as possible in every single video. And it, it, however long it happens to be is however long it happens to be. All right. And if you need to fast forward, you can fast forward. I put chapter markers, whatever you need to do, do it. But the value is in here. Okay. So I have mapped out a section and what I've done, I, I've hidden two other sections, one with a container, one with a div. Uh, and, or the way we're going to talk about this, I guess, and you're going to see a red box and you're going to see a very, very light red box. The dark red box is the thing that we are talking about in this particular area of the training. Okay. Th this is not how I always do things, but I think when we're talking about sections versus containers versus divs, cause they all kind of work together, it's just helpful to highlight which thing I'm talking about at any given time. So the first thing you're going to see on the screen is a section. And a section in bricks is added like this. So uh, if I am just, you know, on any given section, right, or maybe the page is blank, I hit the little plus sign up here and you can type in section right here. You can also pin these up top, which I highly recommend. I don't know if you can move them around. I don't think you can move them around, but you can definitely pin them and it makes the things that you use most right there at your fingertips. So the section is right here and you're gonna see that a section can be added. However, when I add a section, it's gonna look different than when you add a section. And we're gonna talk about why that is. I'm gonna delete this one. We'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, so this is kind of what it's gonna look like when you add a section minus the borders. You're gonna notice that the content that you put in this section touches the edges, like the top of the section is touching, it's touching the bottom. It is not though, touching the left and the right. So I've got some notes here that we're gonna go through together just to make sure that we hit all of the key points. So a section is used to separate topics on a page. So I'm gonna flip over to, here's my agency website, right? So this is the hero section. So the hero section is a um, specific topic of content. It has our main headline, our main lead, it's got calls to action, kind of says what's going on here. So this is one section. And when you're looking at web pages, you wanna start thinking in terms of sections and divs and containers because all of these websites follow what is called the box model. Everything fits into boxes. Now, these boxes can't actually be seen, right? But if you know how a website is constructed, you start to see websites in boxes. And that's what you want as a designer or a developer. But to the user, they don't really understand where the boxes are, where the boundaries of these boxes are, but we do. And so the first fundamental box is a section. And I think this is a, a good thing to note. Sections, containers, and divs. They're all boxes, 
They're just different types of boxes for different purposes. But effectively, they're all boxes, right? One of them is called a container, but effectively, they're all containers, all right? And we're going to make sure that you understand the differences between the three things. But let's just go through this page as an example. So here's one section. As I scroll down, you're going to see right here, here's our latest project. This is another section of content. This is topically different from what I'm talking about in the hero section. So it deserves its own section. We come down here. Here is another section with, it's just the standout quote, but it is a new section of content. It is a new topic on the page. We start to scroll down and you're going to see, here's how we do it, which kind of covers our services. Now, it's really two sectors of services. We have the web design that we're highlighting, and then we have the digital marketing and advertising that we're highlighting. Now, you might think, oh, this is one section here, and then this is another section here. But really, this is all one section because it's talking about the services that we provide. Our services is the topic. We might talk about multiple services in this layout fashion that kind of goes left, right, this little grid column fashion. But all of this stuff is related. It's one topic. It's the topic of our services. Thus, it all fits into one section. We scroll down a little bit more and we have social proof. This is a new section. This is contextually different from this content up here. We scroll down to the bottom and we see why choose us. And it got a little blurb from me. This is another section. It's topically different from what is above it and what is below it. We come down and we see a final call to action section. This is another section. It is topically different. And then we get to the footer, which is a special kind of section called a footer. <laughs> and then we have a header, which is a special kind of section called a header. And the thing here that's really important to understand, we can get into the actual HTML of this. Um, let me get out of mobile mode here. And let me pull this up and you can actually see, right? I am going to inspect this section right here and you are going to see one of the fundamental aspects of a section is that it actually has a tag called a section, whereas a container is going to have a tag called a div and a div is going to have a tag called a div. And that's where everybody gets a little confused. They're like, well, is a container is a div and a div is a div. I don't know what, I don't know what the difference is. But there are key differences, right? That's why they have different names in the builder. That's why they're different elements. And that's what we're here to talk about today. But the sections, as you see, separate different topics on the page. And that's how you should think about them. And what happens when you have very clean HTML like this is it's just section, 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 section. It's very nice, very nice and organized, okay? But then you see up here where we have a header. That's a section, but it's a section with a special semantic tag called a header tag. And then there's a footer, which has a special semantic tag called a footer tag. And these help denote when bots are calling the websites, when screen readers are, you know, users are using screen readers. This helps decipher, it provides landmarks for where certain things are on the page. Section elements in Bricks are actually dual elements, a section and a container. See, if you were writing HTML, you would create a section in the HTML and that would be it. It would be a section. You could start putting things in it. But in reality, you need a container inside of a section and we're going to talk about why. And Bricks knows this. So Bricks actually puts the container in the section for you when you first add the section. You can see that with the light border right here. This is actually a container inside the section. You can even see it in the structure panel over here. You'll see section, you'll see a container nested within the section. Full width, sections are full width using a semantic section tag by default. We, are, we already talked about this. And this is important that the section element stretches the full width of the page. You're going to notice on certain websites, I don't know if I have any pulled up right now. Let's go to uh, like sbgatlanta.com. Okay, so this is one of our client sites right here. You see this background photo stretches to the edge of the page, even though the content in this section does not stretch to the edge of the page. And you're gonna see this multiple times, okay? Depending on uh, you know what page we're on. So I'm gonna go to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu here. You see it again up here in the hero section. As we scroll down, we've got a full width content right here. We've got content touching the edge over here. We've got, oh, 
look, we've got this parallax section with a full width background image once again. Okay, so there's a lot of examples where you need content to go to the edge of a page. If you just add a div or a container that's kind of floating in the middle of the page where your page, most of your page content is, you're not going to be able, there's no structure there to add full width colors or full width images that stretch edge to edge. That is the responsibility of the section. So sections aren't just important for separating out your content. They serve as full page width containers that can house things like background colors, background images, real images that behave like background images. There's a lot of different possibilities, but the, having the section in the first place is very, very important. Number four, sections should have default top and bottom padding, which can change, and left right padding that remains consistent. This is critical. One thing I want you to notice as we scroll down this page, I want you to look at the left side of the content here, all the way from the header down through the entire page. And you're gonna notice that the content, even though I have multiple sections and multiple different types of layouts going on, the content is in perfect left alignment throughout the page. It's actually in perfect right alignment as well, where the content ends over here. Like these images will end exactly where the end of the navigation ends. And that's because websites in general have a page width that is different from the browser width. So the browser may be very wide, but the website content is contained in a narrow column. That column is defined by your containers, okay? that rest inside of your sections, which we're gonna to get to in just a second. We'll take a look at those containers. But here's the workflow. When you're adding a section, notice that in this section, for example, my content is not touching the top or the bottom. In this section, my content is not touching the top or the bottom. In this section, I do have a map touching the top and the bottom, but my content in general is not touching the top and the bottom. Very rarely will you need your content to touch the top and the bottom of a section. Therefore, you need to protect your content from touching the top and the bottom of a section by default. And we do that with top and bottom section padding. Now, in Bricks, the reason I did this is because when you add a section, it's different from when I add a section. When you add a section, there's gonna be no top and bottom padding. Unless you go into your theme, you go into your theme styles, and it's in here somewhere. I don't, maybe here, here element section, and then padding. But I don't use any of these controls. And the reason I don't is because I'm using automatic CSS. So when I add a section, I type section, I add it, you're gonna notice that my section already automatically has padding. Not only does it have padding on the top and the bottom, it's responsive padding, which means it shrinks, that padding gets smaller on mobile devices versus how it looks on desktop. And I can also control that responsive padding very easily from the ACSS dashboard. I get to choose exactly you know, how this padding behaves across the website. I also have classes where I can make that padding larger or smaller like that on the fly, which is extremely helpful. Sometimes you want a normal section. Sometimes you want a smaller section. Sometimes you want a tiny section. Sometimes you want no padding in the section. Uh, sometimes you want a very large section, like for a hero, for example. So we can easily change that responsive padding based on the size that we want. We can also change how it behaves from desktop to mobile. How aggressive are we with the way that it shrinks up or expands based on the device? But that's why you're gonna see it's different when I add a section from here. So what this would really look like, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. I, I basically put a class called pad section none on here, which gets rid of the top and bottom spacing. But if I were to remove that class, this is what a section would look like by default. And this is very important. When you add your sections, you don't wanna always have to come change the padding on the section. You should know I pretty much need padding for almost every section that I add. If I don't need it, I'll take it away, but I almost always need it, so it should kind of just be there by default. And you can see that it is, right? But you can see that the container inside the section has no padding by default, and that's important because there's a lot of times where you don't want padding inside of these containers. Remember, the only reason you can see the boundary of this container and that it appears my container is touching my content 
is because it has a border on it, right? This is what it would normally look like where your content just appears to be neatly floating inside of your section, right? I put a class on here to show you a boundary of where that uh, container exists so that you can see it. But normally that wouldn't be there and it would just look like your content is neatly floating. And you'll see right here, if I take this off, you're gonna see that my content perfectly aligns with my header. And it doesn't matter how many sections I put on this page, that content is always gonna be in perfect alignment and it's gonna be in perfect alignment on every device. And the reason that is, is because the rule that I just talked about, you should have top and bottom padding that can change but you should have left and right padding that always remains consistent. Because if your left and right padding changes section to section, when you go look at your site on mobile devices, some sections are gonna look squished, some are gonna be all the way to the edge, it's gonna be all over the place, there's no consistency, that's no bueno, right? We don't want that to be happening. So we need consistent left and right padding. Okay, so let's go back to desktop. Let's keep going down the list, all right? Parent of containers or divs. So a section is a parent of a container or a div. And this is a, a very critical thing. You can add a section, you can take the container and get rid of it. And there's your section still there. You can add a div. And if you add a div instead of a container, notice that this goes all the way across, a container could do that as well. And we're gonna talk about containers in just a second. Don't worry, I know you're like thirsty. You're like, give me the container speech, right? But just look at this for a second. It can be a container or it can be a div. It doesn't matter. Number six, avoid using margin on sections. Here's what you don't wanna do. You don't wanna add a section. Now see, this section is touching this section. They're touching each other. You want them touching each other because if you apply something like a background color, so I'm gonna do base ultralight, get a nice little base ultralight background there. You want that touching this section because if this section has something like BG base ultra dark, okay, we're not gonna do that, but you can see that they're touching. Let me go to the front end. Obviously this is gonna look horrible, but we're not worried about aesthetics right now. We're worried about lessons. So these two sections are touching each other, yeah? If you take and you put a margin on the top of here, so I'm going to go just quickly to the ID lay, uh, level layout margin top. We'll just do like something like 80 pixels. I now have a gap between my sections and that gap is unfillable. So you don't want to use margin to space out your sections. If you need more room in a section, use more top or bottom padding. Do not use margin because you're going to have unfillable gaps in your layout. We want to avoid that at all costs. Okay, so I'm going to take that off of there. Number seven, avoid changing the width of your sections. I just explained a minute ago that a section is supposed to be full width content. So if you change the width of it, just like I showed you using a margin there, you have an unfillable gap between your sections. If you change the width of a section, you have an unfillable gap on either the left, the right, or both. You don't want unfillable gaps in your design. So if there's certain layouts where you might feel like you need to change the width of a section, you don't. You need to put a container or manipulate the container that is in that section to get the layout you want to achieve. Okay, you shouldn't be having unfillable gaps on the left, on the right, on the top, or the bottom of a section. All right, next thing is number eight, avoid using random left-right padding values. We already talked about that. Number nine, generally avoid using grid or flexbox layout controls on the section itself. Now, the reason you're doing this, and, and there is kind of a, a little bit of a rule here, like this can be set to flex column. Like that's the natural stacking order of content on the web. So that's not a big deal. But if you start changing this to like horizontal, one, if you only have one container in the section, nothing is going to happen. It's totally irrelevant to do that. It's only going to cause problems. Because if you decide you need another container in this section, you go ahead and add that container. It's going to add it next to your other container. And it's now pushing the page width out of alignment. Okay, that's no bueno. We're doing things improperly here. This is not appropriate for how to use sections. All right, we want to delete this. If you need side-by-side -side content, we're going to do that at the container level or we're going to do that at div level. We're not going to do that at the section level.
Because what that also prevents is you from ever being able to put a heading above those side-by-side -side content, right? Let me just show you that right now. We're going to add a container. So here's my container. It put it to the side. What if I want this heading to be up here? Okay, I pull it out. I can't get it up there. It's on the side of my content and it can only ever be on the side of my content because my entire section is set to lay things out in rows instead of columns. And that's not how things work on the internet. Things work in columns on the internet. It's not to say that things can't be side by side, but you shouldn't force all things to be side by side. You want to contain side by side content in its own container, which could be a div, it could be a container, but it's not gonna be a section, okay? So that is the list on sections. So what we're gonna do is bring containers into the mix now. So I'm gonna grab this container right here, I'm gonna show it, and there we are. Okay, so now you see the dark red box is around this inner container here, and my light red box is around the outside, and that's signifying that the light red is our section boundary, and the dark red is the actual container that is in this section. And remember, you get the container by default when you add a section to a page. You get the container by default. It's our, There's one already there for you. So let's talk about the container now. You use containers to lay out page width or full width content. I already talked about how containers establish a page width. Full width content, is it works just like this, okay? If you need this container to give you full width, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to style, you're gonna wanna go to layout, and under here, width, 100% and immediately you're going to get almost to the edge. The reason you don't get all the way to the edge is because that left and right padding we talked about. That left and right padding is very important for protecting your content from ever touching the edge of the screen. Now there may be some cases like with images where you actually want the content to touch the edge of the screen. And remember, this isn't colors. This isn't background images. My background color in this section can still easily touch the edge of the screen. See, my background color goes to the edge even though my content does it because I'm able to put that background color or a background image on the section, which is the parent wrapper, which goes edge to edge. Even if the container doesn't go edge to edge, its parent wrapper does. But there may be some cases where you're like, I really need that container to go to the edge of the screen. And if you do, the solution is to remove your left and right padding. Now you could do that at the ID level here. You could go to the ID, you could go to layout, you could go to padding right and left and set this to zero, and you will get it to go all the way to the edge. If you're using automatic CSS, that's unnecessary. You can simply do pad none, get rid of all the padding in your section, okay? Um, there's a few different ways that you can handle getting rid of padding. Notice I didn't remove my container and say, oh, I'm just gonna put everything in my section. That's not a good idea. Your content still needs to be contained. We just need that inner container to go all the way to the edge, right? We're not getting rid of the inner container to make a full width section. We're leaving our section, leaving our container, and we're just manipulating the width of the container. We're taking away any padding that we need to take away. That's how you're gonna achieve that. By the way, at the end of this, I am going to build out a little landing page, not a landing page. I'm just going to build a section so that you can see like one of this from our example sites, um, just so you can see how we use a section, how we use a container, how we use divs. All right. So make sure you're sticking around for that. There's a lot of gold in these trainings. Okay. So let's keep going down our list. Containers are page width using div tags by default. So if we go and look, did I save? Let me go ahead and save. I'm going to save and I'm gonna preview on the front end, and I am going to inspect our container, and you're gonna see right here that it is a div. Nothing special about it. It has no special tag, but it does have special behavior. In Bricks, like we showed, a container is page width by default, right? You can make it full width, but it is page width by default. So if you stick a container into a section, it's gonna be the page width. It's not gonna go full width, it's gonna be the page width, and that's important to know. Okay, a normal div does not do that. So a container does that, a normal div does not do that. I can use containers, multiple containers in a section, all right? So for example, I could add another container to this section, and it puts it right below, and notice they're the exact same width by default, because containers are what? their page width by default. Okay, good. We should be, it should be starting to click now, right? 
All right, so sections can have multiple containers. Just talked about that. Number four, they should typically remain page width or be full width. So those are your two options. Here's what I would not recommend. Don't start going willy nilly with your widths. Don't be like, oh, this one needs to be 1366. Oh, I put 13,600. 1360, okay? There's 1360 right there. It's six pixels short of the other one for no reason, right? That's not going to look good. When your content doesn't align left or right, that does not look good. Uh, so don't do it unless you know exactly why you're doing it. All right, so let's delete that right there. Uh, should not typically be used outside of a section. So you wouldn't wanna just, here's our page, right? You wouldn't wanna just be like, oh, you know what? I think I'm gonna add, I don't even know if I can do it by default. Uh, we'll do container and let's just drag this out of here. Put it like right there. It's not in a section, clearly, right? So what is it basically producing? It's producing a gap, an unfillable gap on the left and right. We already talked about unfillable gaps. Avoid them at all costs. You don't need unfillable gaps on your website. And then you're like, Kevin, but I can just make it 100% width. You can just make it 100% width. Let's do that. There's a 100% width container that's not in a section. But what have you accomplished? You don't have a semantic section tag and you have a container that's now trying to behave like a section. Why did you do that? Just use a section in the first place, right? You get the semantic tag. You don't have to play around with it, right? So, you know, why? Why? Just follow the rule. Don't put a, a container outside of a section. There's really not much reason to. Okay, next. Uh, let's keep, I'm trying to move quick because, you know, yeah, we, we always get the complainers, but hey, yeah, it's too much value for me. It's, this video is a little too long. I think you, you talked a little too. Containers are typically the parent of divs or other content. So I'm not putting sections inside of containers, right? It is not the parent of a section. A section is the parent. I am putting divs inside of containers. I'm not putting other containers inside of containers. I already kind of talked about that. I am putting divs inside of containers, okay? Uh, and we'll get to see that when I start doing a little real world example. Uh, and then we have number seven, has native multi-column flex box layout options in bricks, but this use isn't recommended. So there is another special feature in bricks of containers, and it is the ability to when I'm adding one, uh, and let's see, what's the easiest way to do this for you guys? I'm just gonna add a new section, okay? I'm gonna grab this container, and I'm gonna click this little button right here. There's also, when you're adding a container, there's this little icon right here that kind of opens this window, and both of these icons generally show you predetermined layouts, and it's important to know that these layouts use Flexbox. So if you're using a 50-50 layout, you're gonna see this side-by-side -side columnized content. And you might think, hey, that's very important for me to have. We can see right here on an example where we're gonna need something like that. The problem is that these layouts all use Flexbox. Let me go backwards, okay? We're back at our blank uh, container here. And I'm not against Flexbox. I use Flexbox all the time. What I don't use Flexbox for is structural layouts for the most part. I use Flexbox for content layouts. And there is a distinction there. Um, there is a great debate on Flexbox versus CSS Grid. In my opinion, Grid is phenomenal for structural layout. Flex is phenomenal for moving content around and laying out and positioning content. But the structural layout, which columns are a structural layout, grid dominates that space. It's much better for that than Flexbox. Flexbox also has some unintentional consequences to how it is used that may get a little tricky for you. And I'm gonna give you an example where we insert something like this, where we have a small left column and a large right column. And these things are controlled by percentage widths. These values can get a little out of whack. Look at this. So if I have values that don't add up to 100, well, I have an unfillable gap on the right-hand side of my page. And that's a big problem. That never happens with grid, right? So Flexbox and then your Flexbox child containers can actually change widths on you as your content gets longer in some cases. If you haven't set a proper flex basis, there's a lot of weird things that can go awry with Flexbox. 
None of these things happen with Grid. And Grid is very simple, very straightforward. The problem is Grid's not, it's not part of Bricks yet. It's coming. However, cheat code, if you're using automatic CSS, full support for Grid. You can build responsive Grid in seconds like that. And I'll show you that when we get to um, making this little section right here. Okay, so I'm going to delete this nonsense. What I would recommend is stay away from these things, okay? I know that's gonna be blasphemy for a lot of people. They're like, how could you say that? This is one of the most important parts of bricks. Not when you have grid, it's not. It's not important at all. I can build a $30,000 website and never touch this panel right here. When I have grid at my fingertips, I don't need this panel at all, okay? But it is there, so... I just wanted to show it. I, you know, might as well point it out because it's there and you should know about it. Mostly you should know you shouldn't really need to use it. Typically best. Oh, I don't even know. I didn't even finish writing my notes. Okay. <laughs> you get what you pay for. Have you paid anything for this tutorial? No, it's for now you can see divs and I want you to notice divs are outlined in red. And then this container is still outlined in light red and the section is still outlined in light red. So you can see where the boundaries of all of these three containers are. Uh, but you have your divs right here. Divs are the Swiss army knife, okay, of web design. And this is why when I first got to Bricks, I was like, where, where's the div, right? Like, we can't build a website without a div. What are you trying to do to me? So the first feature request that I put in was for a div. And then I went into the inner circle and I was like, hey, Bricks doesn't have a div. We need a div in Bricks. We're going to use Bricks. We have a div, guys. We have a div. And the div is extremely important. Swiss army knife of what you're going to be doing when you're building websites. They can be full width. Uh, they are, sorry, they're full width by default. They can be any width though. These, remember I said the container, it's like, don't just be willy nilly making widths for the container. With a div, you can willy nilly make your widths for your divs. So if you need some nilly willy di div widths, then there you go. There's your Swiss army knife. All right, so full width by default uses the div tag. So we'll show you this right here. Let me go ahead and save. Let's go to the front end. All right, we're gonna refresh. Did I save? No, I didn't save. All right, let's refresh, come down. Let's inspect, you can see right here, proof positive, there's a div tag, but there's a hidden little feature of our divs that we're gonna talk about in just a second. It doesn't have to be a div tag. In a lot of cases, it should not be a div tag. And this is why the div is so fundamentally important. But let's keep going with our list. Uh, like I said, number three can be any width depending on use case. Number four can be, here, here we go, here's the magic can be transformed into other semantic elements such as articles, A tags, links, ULs, unordered lists, LIs, list items, OLs, ordered lists, the, it's like tons of possibilities, okay? So uh, number five, before we rock and roll on this uh, sample build here, it could be the parent of other divs or content. All right, so we got that out of the way. I want to show you this right here, HTML tag on a div. Look, I can change it to a section. I wouldn't want to do that. I can change it to a link. Hmm, might, want to, might want to do that. I could change it to an article. Definitely want to be able to do that. Um, if you watch some of my other videos, especially on accessibility, I talk about how most people don't realize that when you build a card for like a service, even if it's not a blog post, like you can have a card for a blog post, you can have a card for a service, you can have a card for a team member, you can have a card for um, service areas, for locations. Cards are very important. Features, cards are very important. Now, a feature wouldn't really fall into this category, but a team member might, a location might, a service might. Those are actually articles semantically in HTML and they need an article tag. And so if I just choose article on this div and we save and we go to the front end, I want you to see what happens here. It doesn't put an article in my div, it transforms my div into an article. You can see that right here. And this is very important for accessibility. It's very important for semantic accuracy in your HTML. The ability to change the HTML tag on these divs is absolutely critical. 
okay? Um, you can change it to an aside. And now that begs the question, what do all these things mean? You can change it to a nav if you're gonna create a navigation. Uh, you can change it to address. You can even hit custom and write your own custom HTML tag. All right, so we're going to move on. We need to do something real world because you need to see this in action now. Now, these, all these uh, left, right column layouts would all be in the same section because they're effectively features, right? It's going down the list of features. But each one of these is its own container. It's not its own section, but it's its own container. Now, you look over here. Whoa, we got a little bit more complication right here. Two buttons that need to go side by side. If you didn't know, buttons by default don't go side by side. They go on top of each other. So we need to make them go side by side. So we're probably going to need a div right here. And then when we do this side by side content, we're going to need a div right here to house this left content. We're going to need a div right here to house this right hand content. Let's go ahead and start building it so you can see exactly how it comes together. We're going to use just a little tad bit, probably an automatic CSS. So you can see a little bit of that happening and just because it's so much faster and easier and because we need grid and grid is not part of bricks. So I'm going to start by adding a section and notice this is great about bricks. That is the first thing it asks you to do. You hover over the plus sign. It's like, hey, you probably want to insert a section here. So I'm going to insert a section and this is what I get right here. Now let's take a look at this. We've got uh, image on the left, content on the right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my container. I don't want to do anything with my section because notice there's no, and I can actually delete this, delete this, delete this. Okay. So we're down to two. I don't like getting very tabby. You don't want to get tabby. You start clicking on the right. So we just need our section to be blank effectively. All the magic is happening in the container. So this container needs to be a two column grid. So I'm going to grab my container. I'm going to come up to classes. Automatic CSS does everything with classes and or variables. So there are classes for creating grids. If I want a two column grid, it's grid two. So I do grid double dash two and I get a two column grid. Now you can't see a two column grid there because we haven't put any cells in our grid. Cells in a grid are just divs. They're just more containers. They're just more boxes, right? So I wanna put a box, two boxes in here. And you're gonna see when I add these two boxes, they're gonna be side by side. So I'm going to add a div. I'm going to hit, uh, click on it right there. And you can see that that div only takes up half of this container. Why does it only take up half? Because it's a two column container. It's waiting on the other grid to arrive, which we're going to duplicate. And now we're going to see two divs side by side. There is our multi-column layout. Now I'm going to grab my container and I'm going to put a gap on this grid because I don't want my content to be touching. I want this little gutter to be here. So I'm going to do gap and I'll do XL. Now in automatic CSS, I can do small, I can do medium, I can do large, I can do XL, I can do XXL, right? I have a lot of options and all of my gaps are perfectly responsive. All of my, and all of my gaps match all of my other spacing. Automatic CSS has a is a mathematical spacing system, which means that it's all driven by mathematical ratios. It's all automatically responsive with clamp functions, and it all has automatic fallbacks for browsers that don't support clamp. So when I put padding medium on a box and I put gap medium in between the boxes, the gap medium is gonna perfectly match the padding medium. <laughs> That's phenomenally helpful, right? Uh, for consistency purposes. So I'm gonna do a gap of XL and you're gonna see a gap appear automatically right between those divs. And then the great thing about grid is if I just kept duplicating guys, um, let me not do that, that's the wrong shortcut. So I'm doing shift command D. Look at how it just keeps filling out the grid. I can just keep having columns all the way down the page. Now, sometimes I want that. In this case, I don't want that. I just want two. I want one next to the other one. Now, you're asking yourself, Kevin, what, what about mobile devices? These things are not going to fit on every, this left, right thing that you've got going on, this grid. This is not going to fit on phones, right? Okay, well, you get to decide which breakpoint you want this grid to now stack the content on top of itself. And I'm going to choose the L breakpoint. So we have letters that correspond. This is the small breakpoint which is that vertical phone. Horizontal phone is the M breakpoint. This tablet, vertical tablet's the L, and this is the XL. And so if I wanted to break to one column at the L breakpoint, I simply write, instead of grid two, I write grid L1. So I want a grid at the L breakpoint of one column. 
So I do grid L1. And when you type grid, by the way, it's going to recommend all of the, what, what's available to you, right? So you can see in the list, here's L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. So I'm just gonna choose grid L1, bam. And now you can't see it because we're not at the L breakpoint. But if we go to the L breakpoint, let's go to S, M, L. Uh-oh, look at that. We have a stacking grid like that, okay? So very, very important. Now, um, if I decide my gap looking a little large, I can change that from XL to L. Now I have an L gap instead of an XL gap, no problem. Okay, we're going to go ahead and save here and we're gonna take a look at what we need. So I'm gonna save this image right here. We're gonna go into downloads. We're gonna to go to Monarch. Let'll make a little folder here and we're going to, oh, it's called net worth. Okay, so we're gonna save that. Oh gosh, it's saving WebP images. Guys, I can't even really, I can't work with this right now. My, my training environment does not, I'm gonna have to screenshot these, this is awful. Thank God there is a white background. Nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. How could they? I'm not even gonna do all these, screw this. I mean, you, You've seen one left, right grid layout. You've seen them all, okay? All right, so we're gonna go in here and I am going to insert my image. So insert image and I'm gonna select my image and I'm gonna go ahead and go to my desktop. Oh gosh, we gotta look through all these. I got so many screenshots. All right, this one's good enough. We're gonna throw this one in here. All right, we are going to save, insert. Perfect, okay. That's looking a little large. And it's just because the reason is their page width is not the same as my page width. Now I can go into ACSS and I can change the page width. I can change it in bricks. I'm, I'm, we're just, we're not getting that detailed right now. I'm just showing you how sections and containers and divs work. So let's say on task. All right, so I've got this right here. I am now going to put in my heading. I need, look, an icon, a heading, text, and a div. Now in your brain, you might've been like, you need an icon, a heading, text, and then two buttons. But really what I need is an icon, a heading, text, and a div, because I need to contain these two items right here. Now I've already used two divs, right? I used a div for our left column. I used a div for our right column. Now I'm going to add an icon, bam, just like that. I'm gonna add a heading. I'm gonna change this to heading number two. So this is gonna be an H2. And then I'm gonna change this to basic text right here. And I'm just gonna quickly fill in this. Okay, maybe I will change our website width in just a second, just so we can see how this dials in. So then I'm gonna go to div. Now that I have a container for my buttons, I can add my buttons. So there's a button and I think I can just duplicate this. Boom, there's another button. See how they stack on top of each other by default? So I need them in their own container, a div, so that I can change the layout of the div. And here is a perfect use case for Flexbox. So notice I'm not doing structural layout of like this entire section. I'm just doing, hey, I need to quickly get these buttons side by side. So I can either change this to horizontal row right here and then put a column gap between these two things. Um, or I could use automatic CSS classes for this I'll avoid using ACSS for this. I'll just use bricks so you can see bricks in action. Now, the question is, what are you gonna put as a value for your gap? Are you gonna just throw a random thing in here? If you haven't watched any of my videos, we don't use pixels around here. Pixels are a no-go for accessibility. They're not a good thing to be using. They don't even really make sense very much in the digital world with all the different kinds of devices and retina screens and all that are out there. Pixels don't make a lot of sense. They're a good reference unit. They're not a good unit for actually using in development. So what we're going to do is we're going to use maybe VW as our gap. Um, we could use CH as our gap, or we could use RIM. That would probably be the easiest thing. RIM translates very easily into pixels, but it's still a relative unit. So it's really good for accessibility. So I could do like three rim, which is about 30 pixels on my website, but that's not enough of a gap right there. So I'm gonna do six rim, all right? And, oh, it actually hasn't even put it in yet. Yeah, I was wondering why three looks so uh, small. So uh, and when I click out of here, here's what I get for three rim. But again, I, am, is my goal to just make up random numbers or am I trying to be consistent? If I'm trying to be consistent, this is where a framework like automatic CSS comes in. I can use a spacing variable. So let's say I want small spacing. 
So I can do var, that's for variable, space s, and now I get my small spacing. And the reason I'm using a variable like this is because I can use space s for a gap. I can, like here on this grid, I can use space s for gap on buttons. I can use space s for padding on custom components. And my space s on my padding, on my gap, on my margin, wherever I choose to use that variable, is going to be exactly the same. And then when I use space M it's gonna, and space L, these are gonna be mathematically spaced out according to a ratio. So this is how you build a website when everything is mathematically perfect. It's like, wow, that looks super consistent. That looks really clean. Okay, so now I put all of these things into this little container here. I can now, I just wanna space them all out evenly, right? So I'm gonna use a class called OwlM. I didn't want this to be just an ACSS tutorial, but I mean, it's it's just the easiest way to, to do things. So I'm gonna do owl M and you're gonna notice that everything spaces out perfectly evenly. And that medium spacing matches any other medium spacing that I might use elsewhere, which again, makes everything super consistent. Okay, so now we have this, this uh, floating div up here. We obviously need this to be centered. You see that this content is centered next to, let me go ahead and put our content in. Oh, I already did, but it needs to be larger. So I'm just going to go text L. And again, I don't have to make any decisions, right? My L size text is mathematically larger according to the ratio that I set from my M size text, my normal size text. And this is based on my settings, what I currently have it set to for large size text. Uh, and this is also responsive automatically. It's controlled by a clamp function. Um, now I want to put in sign up and learn more on my buttons. So I'm doing sign up right here sign up oh don't want that capitalized and then on this one i'm doing learn more and then i want to style these things as buttons so we have button primary if i could type so button primary gives me my primary button and then i have button primary and then i stack another class called button outline and it makes an outline button right there and now you can see just like these now these have border radius we can talk about how to do that in a second but I now have my normal button and my outline button next to each other, just like that. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna get this content down here so that it's aligned to the left of the image. So there's a couple different ways to do that. There is a class, now this, you use Flexbox, and here's a good thing. You can combine Flexbox with Grid. Things are very powerful when you combine Flexbox with Grid. Um, there is a class called Align Items. And if I align items to the center, you're gonna notice that it, bang, it puts them right in alignment with each other in the center and all is good in the world. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and then we're gonna go and, oh, it would help if I actually previewed my site. There you go. So we have our layout, we have our, our uh, heading, our text, our buttons next to each other. Now, does it look exactly like this? No, because I haven't dialed everything in yet. I can absolutely dial it in not really the point of our tutorial here. We're showing sections versus containers versus divs. But I will go ahead and make our page width content uh, a little bit smaller, okay? So I'm gonna go over here, and first of all, we're gonna see what, our, what width we're working with here. Um, so I'm gonna go up here, and let's find that container. We are working with 1140. That's significantly smaller than what I had my site set to. So I can go to theme styles, I can go to container, and I can go to 1140, okay? So now it is 1140. Now I would want to also go into automatic CSS. So I'm gonna go into the back end here. I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go to ACSS and I'm gonna go to viewport and I'm gonna change my website width right here to 1140 as well. I want them to match so that they're in sync, right? Um, so now that that is happening, all is good. And if we save and we refresh, Oh boy, we're starting to look almost exactly the same. I mean, we have different fonts, right? Um, I took a screenshot of this, so it's not gonna be exact. Uh, but you see, I'm, I'm almost mimicking the exact layout. What about our buttons? I want those to be rounded. Hey, that's no problem. ACSS, I go to my button radius. We can do like 40M or something insane like that. And then I'm going to refresh and I have rounded pill-shaped buttons. Uh, just like that, just like magic. Um, I want them to be smaller and have less padding. Okay, no problem there. So I'm gonna go into my padding for my buttons. I have my top and bottom padding. 
I can go to 0.5M on that. I can go to 1M left and right, hit save. All of my buttons automatically update across my entire website, easy peasy. Notice that they have a minimum width on that. If I don't want my buttons to have a minimum width, I simply go in here and I look for my button width setting. I just clear that out, okay? Minimum is zero, I'll hit save. Then I'll go back to my front end and look, buttons are the way, now I don't personally like that, but it's the way they have it here, okay? And you can see instantly, I mean, look at that. It's almost an exact match. I'm just like, you know, willy nilly trying to, you know, change a couple settings here and there. So that's kind of the power of automatic CSS. Um, and you see here, we had a section, we had a container. Now, what if I want the container uh, for the next one, right? So now I can duplicate this container. So I'm gonna uh, basically come over here and I will hit duplicate and it puts another one right below. Now I grab my section and I'm like, I want all these things spaced out. Hey, no problem. Owl XL and they're all spaced out now. All my containers in this section are gonna be evenly spaced out. And now what I can do is I can just come over here. I have my two divs effectively and I can swap them. Okay, look at how fast that was. I hit save. Now I can just refill out the content. We go look at this on the front end and now we have alternating section-based content, but it's not a different section, it's just different containers. Now, you feel like those things are too far apart? Okay, we don't need OWL XL on there. We don't need XL spacing. Maybe we just want OWL L spacing. So now we have a little bit of spacing between. We could do M, we could do S, we could do XS, whatever you wanna do. Now, the problem is here, I know what you're probably thinking is like, hey, when this stacks on mobile, you're gonna have image and then content then you're gonna have content again and then image. And that's not good, right? We can see that if we go to the front end and we just look at this, there's your image, there's your content, eh, womp womp, there's your content, there's your image, right? So we need to effectively, at our L breakpoint, which is where we stacked our columns, we need to make sure our image comes first. Well, in automatic CSS, it's as simple as this. You grab that div that's housing that content and you put order, first, and then you can see L right here, order first L, and that's gonna make that div come first in this grid at the L breakpoint. And so now we're gonna refresh, and we're gonna see right here, image, content, image, content. So fixed, just like that. Um, and you could do that all the way down with all of your sections. Of course, there's ways you can do custom CSS to make that stuff happen automatically. I've done tutorials on that before. So let me go ahead and back to screen here. That is just, a quick, <laughs> quick, it's not, it wasn't quick, was it? Um, I know I'm gonna get the comments. This could have been done in 10 minutes. You got a lot of extra value out of it. That's what's important. But we talked about sections, when to use those, what they do. Containers, when to use those, what they do. Divs, when to use those, what we do. We did a little example, a little page build out here. And you got to see a little bit of automatic CSS as well. So I, I feel like this is a really good intro for the Bricks community. Just get you guys some valuable content. There's gonna be way more stuff coming on the way in, in terms of tutorials for Bricks. Of course, there's also my inner circle um, and there's automatic CSS. There's three of those things that you should have in your mind. Just be thinking about and make sure this, this is the most important thing. If you wanna see more of this stuff, hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up. And then I want you to, if you're from the Bricks community specifically, I want you to drop a comment and I want you to say, I'm from Bricks or I'm for Bricks or I'm from the Bricks community or something related to Bricks, just so I know how many of you are coming over from the Bricks community. And the more people, obviously, that are here from the Bricks community, the more Bricks tutorials I'm gonna be rolling out, plain and simple. So that's it for me today. Love you guys. Thanks so much for your support. And uh, I'll obviously be back very, very soon. Peace.